Okay, today is May 22nd, 2016. Hope everybody's having a nice weekend. It's been a couple weeks that uh, the last time I uh, put up a video and uh, went back and looked at it and uh, as it turned out, really haven't been uh, missing much because if you have uh, watched the uh, video, the last video that I put out, uh, lots of those uh, scenarios that was uh, covered in, the, uh, in that video actually uh, played out. So you might want to take a look at that and uh, just to uh, get some idea on uh, some of the uh, the price action and uh, how did uh, play out and uh, and some of the uh, context uh, behind uh, some of those uh, scenario. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the uh, crude oil uh, right now. It seems like it's uh, bumping up against this uh, close to this fifty dollar mark. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see it actually break through that 50 before we get a pullback. Uh, and one of the reasons why I do anticipate a pullback is uh, if the dollar continue to be strong, uh, like uh, I said on the uh, last video, and that the uh, the Fed you know will talk up the uh, the dollar, right? Um, and uh, you have uh, seen that. Uh, just recently with the FOMC uh, uh, minute that the uh, actually uh, sound quite hawkish much more hawkish than the announcement from the uh, the uh, FMOC meeting right? initially the announcement was uh, interpreted very dovish and that's why we did not see the strengthening in the dollar and until uh, you know uh, uh, things have uh, kind of calmed down, then uh, the uh, Fed start uh, uh, talking about uh, a, a potential rate height or couple of them this year and so forth and so forth. Then last week, uh, we got the uh, minute that came out and it sounded very hawkish and, uh, and put the possibility of a rate height in June uh, much more uh, you know, realistic than uh, than what the market have originally interpreted that it could be, but uh, in regardless, right? Uh, this is kind of anticipated uh, rhetoric for the Fed to try to talk up the dollar, uh, and, and uh, because uh, you can see that after the uh, the uh, FMOC meeting, the last meeting, and also the uh, inaction from the uh, BOJ that the, uh, the yen really have strengthened against the dollar and that is also one of the uh, primary reasons why the dollar has to uh, you know go up to uh, uh, you know kind of weaken the uh, yen a little bit so uh, those are all uh, rhetoric uh, uh, that the uh, central bank uh, use occasionally to uh, talk up or talk down the dollar and that's what we are seeing right now uh, do I believe I wake up in June? Absolutely not. That's my take on that. But uh, hey, market don't care what I think, right? So we'll see. But anyway, with that premises, uh, let's take a look at the crew. Uh, do you, uh, you know, could anticipate that it run up to this, you know, and then get a pullback to this uh, 45 and uh, or even come back down to this 44 level here in this zone? Yeah, remember I said that uh, most likely this year we're gonna be chopped around between this 35 and 50 level, right? Okay, if we get anywhere above that 50, any you know, or stay above that 45 for a sustained period of time, then we can see some of the flagger come back in, right? and that could uh, also uh, you know uh, uh, increase the supply back again. And then uh, you know the uh, Saudi and all the other uh, OPEC uh, oil producer will you know be uh, fighting for market share and will increase the uh, further increase the supply and push the price back down. So that's why I uh, kind of anticipate that most likely you know the medium area is somewhere around this 40 45 area, right? But the range is probably 35 to uh, 50, right? So that's my take on oil is that we uh, look for maybe a possibility of a little bit more of a push up to that 50 and then come back down okay so 
uh, that we, we're going to see price uh, maybe come back and retest this uh, 45 to uh, you know 44 area. Right. Then with the gold, as we said, with the dollar, remember we were uh, anticipating that the uh, the announcement from the FOMC meeting will be a little bit more hawkish to talk down. I mean, uh, you know, to pump up the dollar, and that will push just the uh, the gold to come back down. But as it turned out, it did not happen that way, and so gold went up. But we also said, you know, from the last video, we saw this Doji. Uh, topping candle here and that kind of gave us a clue that uh, you know gold is uh, uh, doing a little bit of a pullback and as we uh, can see from the uh, chart here it uh, you know pulled back and the first level was this uh, 1272 and then the possibility of the 1248 so and right now it's sitting at this uh, 1248 level right at this trend line here and if the uh, dollar continued to strain then we probably will continue to see gold pull back and uh, you know we're still looking at this zone here this pullback zone to get retested you know between this uh, 1205 and uh, you know 1191 so essentially somewhere around this 1200 level still looking for gold to pull back to this level before it make another move up and, and then looking at the uh, see let's look at the yield okay let's take a look at the uh, the 10 year all right the 10 year bond you know we're basically you know looking for a uh, little bit of a pullback right you know, with the hawkish uh, statement but it didn't uh, get the hawkish statement so instead we got a little bit of a dovish and it's kind of pulled back up now with the recent uh, uh, you know minute showing there's more of a hawkish tone and a double stone which seems to be uh, trying to pull this thing back so we probably will be chopping around here right you know this area okay uh, so it probably will be range bound between this area for a little while until uh, the uh, rate height issue in June get resolved okay so that's basically what I'm looking at right now so it could be uh, chopping around in this uh, you know this area here for now uh, same with the 30-year uh, bond, you know, even though we got this trend line here, uh, the uh, likelihood is it probably will come down and maybe chop in this area for a little while until after the June uh, FOMC meeting. Okay. And uh, for the dollar, uh, we see the dollar broken down here. Uh, we're saying that it, uh, you know, need to hold this, uh, you know, this level here. And the last video was sitting right at that support level. And as you can see, that is spiked down. And we say if it uh, breaks this level, then most likely it's going to come down and test this 91,495. And as you can see, that it just spiked down and it came back up with a nice, you know, a, a big hammer here. And it just made a reversal back up. So right now, it's bumping against this trend line. It could penetrate and move about this trend line, get back into this zone here, somewhere around this 95, 96, before it pull back. Uh, you know, and we test this 94 area. Okay, so the scenario is uh, we could get a little bit more push on the dollar before it come back down into this area. Okay, so uh, see the uh, dollar, uh, you know, come back down again once the uh, market have realized that the uh, it's uh, you know the Fed is all talk and no action because uh, you know rate hike is not really going to happen in June. Okay. And here's the uh, Dow future. Uh, we're looking at the pullback to this zone, and uh, and it went came down to the 17.418. Right, and right now we're looking for a bounce right now, and possibly come up and take out this high, then maybe uh, make a move toward the uh, the all-time high that was put in in May 19 of last year. So just keep an eye on this thing. We're basically looking for a bounce up. Right, which uh, we're looking for this pullback, right? Which we got this pullback, so right now we're looking for this bounce. Right, although you know maybe it could uh, get a little bit more of a pullback to this level here to the 17175 because we get a push up. But right now we're essentially looking for this thing to push up. Right, and here's the ES, the E Mini uh, S&P 500. I put out a uh, post 
on my blog talking about you know beware of the obvious because everybody is eyeing this head and shoulder pattern and essentially I got this level here this 2011.75 as a potential support actually came dip down then get the, the touch that and it bounces off now you know it's not black magic you know there's something behind this thing right okay if I put a fair here and looking at this thing as a H breakdown right okay so if I look at this and if you see this is 127 extension on the downside is 2010 and I got this level here this is the last uh, you know back in that September FOMC uh, announcement day right that 2011.75 that was the intraday high okay that's why I got that level and also you, uh, you can see the confluence is 127 okay off of this H pattern breakdown right okay so we got this and then come back and that's basically was the uh, the premises and the context behind that particular uh, you know level that I put down as a potential support and here's this pivot and essentially this pivot is this uh, particular you know trend line here right we want to break this trend line right okay we want to break this pivot here to get above then we get a you know higher high and maybe form a higher low to get this thing reversed back up and uh, go and test the uh, the all-time high okay so that's basically the uh, you know the premises behind these level it's not really black magic but there is some you know technical analysis uh, behind that to uh, make some of these level okay to uh, you know to to highlight some of these level as potential support or resistant now whether it will play out or not that's really you know uh, uh, you know, more of an off form and guessing than uh, than than a crystal ball thing, right? Nobody has a crystal ball. So anyway, I just want to give you a little bit of context behind some of these levels that I put up. Okay, and you know, some people might draw all kind of trend line and you know try to get intersection and all these kind of stuff. But uh, hey, whatever works, right? You know, but uh, you know there are some uh, context behind some of these levels that I put up. And here's the NQ which is the NASDAQ uh, 100 uh, future you know we're looking at the pullback to the zone here and uh, you know chop around right now it's chopping around here and also you can see that uh, it came down to the 618 you know Fibonacci retracement here you know okay uh, so right now we're looking for a push back up all right okay uh, uh, into this uh, pivot high here and possibly take out this pivot high and get back up to this 47.17 Okay, uh, so that's basically what we're looking at right now. Is uh, essentially we, we we've been you know looking for this pullback, right? And right now we got this pullback and got a little base forming here. So what we want to see now is to anticipate that a possible push up and take out this high because the internal the market internal has not deteriorated to the point that it say it's going to come down like this, right? And then you know a lot of people are probably looking at this uh, one one uh, you know uh, head and shoulder you know maybe something like that but for now we're basically looking for the possibility of this pushing up uh, maybe if we get a failure to get above this level then we, we could go and reassess the price action and maybe uh, that is the time to say it might be uh, be heading down because then we might be uh, looking at a break of this particular trend line here find this resistant uh, if it come up here and it failed to get up above this level then maybe we could get a drop down okay but until that happened right now we're basically looking for this thing to push okay to push up and test this level and if it uh, break you uh, above this particular pivot high then we're looking for this thing to come back into this zone and possibly uh, you know test this level here 47 47 17 you know this pivot high here okay and here's the Russell 2000 uh, future okay again we we're looking for it to pull back to this zone here and right now we'll also be looking at this thing to push back up okay and into uh, you know this area and possibly get back into the zone here so the 1160 is the number to watch for this uh, maybe a little bit more of a push up but if it uh, continue to uh, uh, you know uh, retreat and uh, uh, let me you know to come down Right, then we probably be uh, looking at this, uh, you know, this area, this uh, 1053, okay, 
right? So maybe we do this and try to set up, you know, again another head and shoulder potential type of pattern to put everybody on edge, right? Okay. So so that's basically what I'm looking at. And if we look at the cash index, here's the Dow. Just quickly go to it. Okay. So again, you know, it's got into the zone, and we're basically looking for it to uh, push back up. If it's uh, continue to uh, uh, you know, we trace, then it's probably uh, come down and test this uh, 17,116 uh, area, you know, this level here before we make another push up, push back up. Okay, and the uh, S&P 500, right, again, you know, we're basically, uh, you know, talking about a uh, potential, uh, you know, descending triangle move or something like that. Or, no, that's uh, basically the uh, head and shoulder uh, move. Okay. On this pattern here, okay. But uh, so I'm not gonna leave these zeros on there. So right now, essentially, we're looking for this thing to come up and try to take out this trend line and basically get above this pivot here, right? Okay. Uh, so the Nasdaq 100, you see, is kind of chopping around here. Okay, the tech have been showing some strength uh, during the last week or so. So we're gonna see uh, this thing uh, probably, uh, you know, push this thing up. And again, you know, we're basically looking at somewhere around this 45.73. And same with the Russell 2000. Watch the biotech. There's biotechs. There, you know, a couple things been moving, so you might want to keep an eye on that. Uh, so we'll probably see the Russell to come back up at this uh, 11.60 area here. Okay. And then uh, see. Uh, one thing to uh, look at is the transportation. A lot of people think the transportation is breaking down, and uh, that might be the case, but uh, uh, and it might not because actually we have the transportation coming back up. If we could take back this 77.28, all right, then probably will uh, give a nice push back up to the 80.75. Okay, because actually the transportation has been a little bit outperforming the Dow. Jung Industrial because if you take a look right right here we essentially got this thing going up right right okay but if you look a look at take a look at the Dow Jung Industrial well last week right you see that it's been coming down okay so uh, so the transportation is a little bit outperform the uh, outperforming the industrial so that might give you a little bit of a hint okay and here's the uh, you know, the New York uh, Stock Exchange Composite, right? So, uh, essentially, I got a little bit of a trend line, a channel here also. And we got a little bit of a doji, uh, you know, on Thursday, right? And this kind of set up like a morning star type of a pattern. And that's usually, you know, it's just like the inverse of an evening star pattern. It's a little bit of a, uh, you know, bullish pattern for a bounce. So, we probably see a little bit of a continuation bounce on this thing. And maybe possibly get up to uh, you know this level here somewhere around ten thousand three sixty, okay. Because if we uh, look at this uh, like a double bottom here, right? Okay, this double bottom here and the major move, right? Essentially, we got this major move up here, right, at this level, and it actually went to it, and now it's just kind of been chopping around here, okay, been consolidating. So I'll be looking for possibility to come up and maybe uh, test this level here uh, you know so so kind of keying in on this uh, breaking of this trend line right so just kind of watch this break here right so that's the index and let's take a look at the uh, well let's go and take a look at the ETF first uh, we take a look at the SPY Right, again, we're essentially you know looking at the spy here. Right, the support level 202.89. Right, essentially, it's a uh, you know the same analogies as the uh, you know the uh, the ES and also the S&P 500 that we went to on the same context. Okay, so right now the uh, resistance level that we're looking at is 208.18. Essentially, somewhere around up at this pivot level. So if we could get above that, then uh, we might come up and try to. Uh, Work to at the uh, all-time high, the retest of the all-time high, okay. and then the uh, yeah because essentially we we saw it came down, uh, you know, 
kind of spike down got the, this hammer here again you know we're seeing this little bit of a morning star type of formation okay and also you can see the stochastic and the macd is kind of turning up so it kind of confirmed this price action and most likely we probably see a little bit of a continuation on the upside so that's why we'll be uh, looking for a little bit of a bounce and see it can it bounce with momentum that is uh, you know enough to take out this 208 right and here's the diamond I, i'm not let's go with the q okay so here's the qqq again we're looking for this move above this 107 and positive uh, you know work yourself back up to this uh you know 111 112 area okay and the uh, iwm right the russell 2000 etf okay again we see a little bit of a morning star type of formation Okay, so we're probably seeing a little bit of a push. Uh, we're going to see, can it get back up to this 115, 20 level? Right? Okay. Uh, so I got a note for myself here. Pull back to 108. Yeah. So let's see, what was that? Five floor. Okay, over here, expect a small bounce. Okay, then continue pull back to 108.58. So essentially, we got this small bounce, came back down. Okay, so all right, let's take a look at some of the stock here. Uh, start off with Apple. Remember, Apple, we we're looking at this 92 level. We're saying that it's uh, you know, if we click this 92, then we're essentially looking at this uh, uh, you know, these descending triangle here right you know this uh, this descending triangle and essentially we got a major move that is down at this level here somewhere around the 50 area right so uh so you can see that actually dipped down to that level and it uh, kind of you know remember we also uh, mentioned in the video about the possible shake and bake right you know because a lot of people looking at this thing is so negative on this apple see that's why you know the market you know will never do the obvious right? everybody eyeing the same thing and the market will kind of turn to the contrary right so that's why you have to go and be aware of some of these uh these obvious things that everybody's looking at is this break of a 92 and it's going to break down and apple is going to fall and so forth and here we are we got a little bit of a reversal candle here in you know the uh, the uh, uh you know, more like a, you know, inverted hammer, right, okay, and then it uh, popped right back up above that 92. So right now we're looking at this 95.90 as a potential resistance, and we might uh, see it uh, hit this resistance and maybe chop around here before it come up and try to fill this gap here, okay, and then if it uh, get up to this gap, then we'll probably be looking at maybe uh, this trend line here uh, somewhere around that 110 level, okay. So, so those are the level that uh, I'm kind of keeping an eye on. Right? On this gap fill, maybe a first level resistance 102.91, because we got this little gap that hasn't been filled yet. So, you know, so we'll probably uh, come up and try to uh, fill this gap. So, let's keep an eye on this uh, 96 area. If we get above this 96, then uh, there's a good chance that it could, uh, you know, try to work its way up. To uh, to this gap fill, so maybe it's do do like this, right? Yeah. Oops. Maybe that might not. So I probably do this. Okay. Right. And here's is uh, Facebook. All right. We're talking about Facebook on this upper channel here. If I do a weekly uh, chart here, you can see this uh, price channel, and it's uh, been uh, tagging this uh, upper trend line. And we're saying that uh, you know it's a uh, high probability that it uh, could uh, pull back, right? And you also could see that weekly candle here, you know this little bit of a doji, you know candle, right? So you know, on this weekly candle, that's not a uh, good thing. So we probably uh, could uh, see a little bit of a pullback on uh, on Facebook, right? Okay, and as I said, you know. Uh, you know, if you're not long on this uh, stock, then don't chase it because the you know it's just too risky to uh, to get on board right now. But if you're uh, holding long on it, then uh, you know maybe 
you know, trail some of the stop and try to protect some of the profit, uh, the chances are, you know, it could come back and fill this gap here, right, this earning gap. Okay. So, so we'll see. Okay. Right. And then we got Amazon, right? Okay, Amazon. We're basically talking about this particular channel, in which is uh, slightly similar to Facebook, but in a uh, different direction, right? We're talking about Amazon might move up and come up to this price channel, which was somewhere around the 750 level. Okay, so you can see that it's still trending toward that target, that upper trend line there, okay, on this weekly chart here. Okay. So we'll see, right, we're basically looking at Amazon, and we have a, a little bit of an inner channel, price channel here, and it broke through it, and it kind of came back in. So right now, uh, it seems like that th this thing could continue to break through, and uh, this, uh, this, this upper channel uh, trend line here could be a magnet for uh, Amazon. So we just have to keep an eye on that. Again, you know, if you're not in it, uh, I'm not going to chase it. I wouldn't suggest chasing this. But, you know, it's uh, uh, seemed kind of attractive, you know, 750. Right? But hey, if it dropped, this thing could pull all the way back at least to, uh, you know, this level here, somewhere around 638. Okay, so and then here's uh, Google. And we're talking about Google keeping uh, this 700, keeping above this 700 level. Uh, you can see that that uh, you know was able to hold above that. And also got a little bit of a trend line going here too. Originally the trend line was over here. Let me uh, go to the weekly. I originally I had the uh, trend line going this way. Okay, so it uh, booked you. So right now, what I did is I set up a trend line down here, essentially a, a uh, in the price channel to uh, see this uh, bigger channel here on Google. All right. Okay. So we'll see how this thing play out. Um, essentially, looking at uh, Google to uh, continue to push up and maybe uh, try to fill this gap here. Okay. We get up to the 750 area because we were looking for this thing to uh, come back up and maybe uh, get back into the new high territory. Right, and Tesla originally was looking at Tesla on this flag here, potential flag, right? Remember? Okay. And then we're looking at this uh, type of a major move, right? But as it turned out, we also wanted that uh, you know uh, earning is coming out, so hands off and you can see after running it's, it's kind of came down so right now it tagged this uh, retracement zone you know between the 50 percent and 618 so we're going to see would it be able to get above the 618 and try to make a push back up uh you know to this pivot high and if it can't uh if it uh you know fail then uh, we'll probably be uh, looking at something uh, back down at this uh you know, these level here and possibly get back and retest this low. So, kind of have to keep an eye on how uh, Tesla is going to behave in the coming week to see could it uh, get back above this uh, level and push through this uh, 241.25. Okay. Uh, and what we got is Netflix. Okay, Netflix is similar to Apple pretty much. Right, remember, uh, you can also look at it this, uh, you know, like uh, this way here, right, this uh, declining triangle here. Or, you know, we also was uh, looking at, you know, this uh, head and shoulder pattern, potential head and shoulder pattern, if it uh, breaks down, down at this end, right. But uh, right now, getting a little bit of a bounce, if we go to the weekly, we can see that, you know, we got a little trend line coming up. So right now, it's hovering. Uh, on uh, this uh, trend line here, so if it uh, could maintain uh, support above this trend line, uh, also got a resistance here. It's 93.25. Okay, so uh, so we're gonna watch that. You know, it could be setting up a little bit of a inverted head and shoulder here. All right, then it could uh, you know push it up here to uh, get up to this gap fill. Okay, so uh, you might want to keep an eye on this 93.25. And see, kind of uh, push up to this 97.18. Okay, 
okay, if we get up, this is 97, 18, then, you know, we might uh, see a try to get into this flat gap field, but of course, you know, keep an eye on this uh, trend line here, as the uh, potential resistance, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, when it get up to try to fill this gap here, right, okay. And finally, uh, Twitter, I remember we were talking about the retest of this low here, so it's can, uh, been holding on over here, so you might want to keep an eye on Twitter here, alright, okay, there might be uh, uh, maybe a uh, trade location that might uh, offer some good uh, risk and reward, you know, it all depend, you know, what your uh, objectives are, uh, because, uh, you know, if you could hold this uh, 1391 area, right, this, uh, this level here, and if it could uh, break about this uh, particular uh, uh, trend line, might want to uh, look into the possibility of uh, watching this guy um, maybe make it up here to this, uh, what's this, uh, 1528, right? You know, into this area here, and, and maybe it could, uh, you know, try to work up into filling this gap, right? Okay, so you might want to uh, keep an eye on uh, Twitter here. Uh, seems like the price action uh, showing, uh, you know, some consolidation here, and it could be setting up for a, you know, a little bit of a upside move here in the near term. So just kind of keep an eye on that. So hopefully, uh, you know, you haven't been spooked too much by the uh, recent price action on those pullback, because uh, you know from the uh, last video, uh, you know, we're sort of anticipating for that type of pullback. Uh, again, you know, the internals still have not deteriorated to a point to say the market have topped out or, or getting ready for a uh, uh, major correction. So uh, we'll, we'll continue to monitor those in, uh, internal and until the market tell us otherwise, we're just uh, going to be a little bit more uh, cautious and defensive, uh, but still uh, have a slight bias on the long side. Okay, good luck on the coming week.